In this video, we're going to be looking at uh, numeration systems and sets. Well, in this section 2-1, we'll just look at numeration systems. Now, there are only uh, four different numeration systems that I will be discussing in this video. One of them is the Hindu-Arabic numeration system, the Tally numeration system, the Egyptian numeration system, and the Roman numeration system. Okay, so here we'll start off with the definition of what numerals are. Those are written symbols to represent cardinal numbers. Numerals are nothing but written symbols that are used to represent cardinal numbers. And these are all the types of numeration systems that we have. But we'll only touch on, in this video, the Egyptian numeration system, the uh, Roman numeration system, the Hindu-Arabic numeration system. And also, I will touch on the tally numeration system as well. All right. A numeration system, by definition, is a collection of properties and symbols agreed upon to represent numbers systematic, systematically. With the numeration system, those types I talked about, because they do have what they call special symbols that rep represent numbers. And we'll first talk about the Hindu-Arabic numeration system. All numerals are constructed from the 10 digits. And place value is based on powers of 10. Okay, so in the Hindu-Arabic numeration system, our place value is based on powers of 10. And this is what the place value looks like. It, it assigns a value to a digit, and it depends upon its placement in a numeral. And this is just part of what the place value or the uh, Hindu Arabic numeration system is, or the place value system is. The units are the ones place. The number next to it, to the left, is the tens place. Next to that is the hundreds place. Next to that is the thousands place. And this goes on and on forever. Like ten thousands, then hundred thousands, then millions, ten millions, hundred millions, billions, and so on. And this is what expanded form looks like. You take each individual digit, and it's going to be multiplied by some power of ten, and it depends upon the place value. Like in this case here, for six thousand seven hundred eighty-nine, the six is in the thousands place, so we write that as six times ten to the third power. And then plus, the 7 is in the hundreds place, so it'll be 7 times 10 to the second. Plus, 8 is in the thousands place, so it'll be 8 times 10 to the first power. And the 9 is in the one place, ones place, so it'll be 9 times 1. Okay, so that's what expanded form looks like. The next, the next term is a factor, and by definition is this. If A is any number and n is a natural number, then a to the n will be a times a times a, and so on, all the way down to times a. In this case, your n, which is your exponent, by the way, tells you that a is going to be used as a, as a factor n times. So you have n factors. Okay, one way of representing a base 10 is by the use of base 10 blocks. Okay. Now in this case here, one long is going to be equal to 10, one row of units, or 10 to the first power. This right here represents a, a long. And this right here, this cube that you see here represents one unit. Get 10 units, that represents a long. And then we next we have a flat, which is 10 to the second, or 100 units or 10 longs, because it takes 100 of those unit cubes to make up one flat, or 10 longs makes up a flat. And then finally, a block, which is 10 to the third, or 1,000 units. A block is like a cube. In this case, you've got one row of 10 flats. 10 of these flats will make up a block. 100 longs will make up a block, or 1,000 unit cubes make up a block. Okay. 
So we can use uh, manipulatives like these, which are base 10 blocks, to represent the base 10 system. Now let's look at this particular example. It says here, what is the fewest number of pieces you can receive in a fair exchange for 11 flat, 17 longs, and 16 units? Okay, now, this is what we have, 11 flat, 17 long, 16 units. In this case here, the 16 units consist of one long and six units. So we can trade, we can trade 10 of those units for one long, and we'll have six units left over. So that means we'll have 11 flats, 18 long, six units. That's after the first trade. Now, when we make the second trade, we got 18 longs, but 18 longs can be created from one flat, okay, and eight and uh, eight longs left over, because it takes 10 longs to make up a flat, okay. So now if we cross this out and add one flat to the 11 flats, we'll have 12 flats. Then we'll have the remaining eight longs and the remaining six units. That's after the second trade. Now we've got one more trade to make with the 12 flats. Ten of those flats will make up a block. So we have one block. And if we take away ten of those flats to make to trade in for a block, we're going to have two flats left over. So here we got one block, two flats, eight longs, six units. Okay, so now the fewest number of pieces for this will be one block plus two flats, eight long, six units, which is a total of 17. So it's going to take 17 units for this particular situation. Okay, and that is to receive a fair exchange from 11 flat, 17 long, 16 units. Okay, now this is the same as writing... 11 times 100 plus 17 times 10 plus 16 as this. 1 times 10 to the 3rd plus 2 times 10 to the 2nd plus 8 times 10 plus 6. Because that's what this is. If we were to write that in expanded form. Okay, now I'm briefly going to, going to discuss the tally numeration system. This system uses single strokes, which are tally marks, to represent each object that is counted. Okay, so in this case here, four vertical lines with a stroke going across it represents five. And then another four lines with a stroke going across it represents another five. And then we got three more vertical lines. So that's five plus five, that's ten, plus these three makes thirteen. Okay. So that's basically what the tally enumeration system is. You're just doing tallies. Now the Egyptian enumeration system looks like this. Here they use special symbols to represent uh, each individual place value from 1 up to 1 million. The vertical staff, which is a vertical bar, vertical line, that represents 1 in the Hindu Arabic equivalent. This symbol is a heel bone that represents 10. This symbol is a scroll that represents 100. This symbol is the lotus flower that represents 1,000. And this symbol right here is a pointing finger. That pointing finger represents 10,000. And then this represents a polywog or a burbot that represents 100,000. And then the last one is the astonished man. That represents 1 million. So here the Egyptian numeration system is similar to our place value system. Because it's in powers of 10. Let's say we want to use the Egyptian numeration system to represent this number. 2,345,123. Okay. Now, notice that the 2 is in the millions place. So we need 2 astonished men to represent 2 million. The three is in the hundred thousands place, so we're going to need three polywogs to represent three hundred thousand. 
The four is in the ten thousands place, so we need four pointing fingers to represent forty thousand. The five is in the thousands place, so five lotus flowers represents uh, five thousand. The one is in the hundreds place, so we only need one scroll. The two is in the tens place, two heel bones, and the three is in the ones place or the units place, so we need three vertical vertical staffs. So this is the Egyptian representation of two million three hundred forty five thousand one hundred twenty three. Okay, the next system is the Roman numeration system. Okay, so here most uh, buildings and some clocks do use Roman numerals to represent uh, numbers. Like the I is a Roman numeral for 1. The V is a Roman numeral for 5. X is a Roman numeral for 10. L is a Roman numeral for 50. C is a Roman numeral for 100. D is a Roman numeral for 500. M is a Roman numeral for 1,000. And usually you'll find uh, Roman numerals used on uh, buildings, also on watches, where some of those watches do have those Roman numerals there, and clocks as well. Also, uh, if you ever watch any type of TV, TV show or movie when they roll the credits, the copyright date is sometimes in Roman numerals. Okay, now this one uses the subtractive method. Okay, like in this one, IV is a Roman numeral for 4. That's 5 minus 1, which is 4. So if you see a number, because we don't write the number 4 with 4 I's. The short way, because see, 4 is 1 less than 5, so we use I and then the V to represent the Roman numeral for 4. The I in front of the X represents the number 9. That's 10 minus 1. The X in front of the L, that's 10, then 50. 10 less than 50 will be 40. XC, that's 10 less than 90. I mean less than 100, which is 90. CD means 100 less than 500, because D represents 500, so 500 minus 100 will be 400. And then CM that's a hundred less than a thousand or nine hundred. Okay. So do be aware of that because some here with the Roman numerals they use a subtracted subtractive approach. And in the Middle Ages a bar was represented was placed over the Roman numeral to multiply it by a thousand. So if you see a V with a bar on top the Roman numeral for V is 5, but since the bar is on top, you want to multiply that by 1,000 to get 5,000. And then CDX, well, CD, that's 100 less than 500, which is 400, and the X is a 10, so that's 410. The bar is over the CD and X, so multiply that by 1,000. That will give you 410,000. Okay. So in this example, if we want to use the Roman numeral system to represent the number 15,478, we can do this. The number 15 is going to be XV. X is the Roman numeral for 10. The 5 is V. For 15,000, we must use the vertical bar above the X and the V for that to be 15,000. Now for 478, the 4 is in the hundreds place. 400 is CD, because that's 100 less than 500, so we have to write that as CD for 400. The 70 is going to be this, L, which is 50, X, X, that's 10 each. L, X, X represents 70. And then for 8, the 8 is going to be V for the 5, and then I, I, I represents the remaining 3. So V-I-I-I -I -I represents the number 8. So that's how you will write 15,478 as a Roman numeral. Okay.
So that's going to that's going to conclude this video on just the numeration systems.